Welcome to the Nurse Station. I'm Maria Mobley, and today we are going to learn about manual blood pressures. So I'm going to talk about a couple key points to remember about taking a manual blood pressure, and then I will actually show you a live demonstration of taking a manual blood pressure. So why do we need manual blood pressures? If you've ever been in a healthcare facility or you uh, nursing students that are in clinicals currently, you see the vital signs machines that take automatic blood pressures. Well, any time a blood pressure maybe changes, or let's say the blood pressure is extremely low or extremely high, you really wanna get a more accurate reading with a manual blood pressure cuff. Or let's talk about those prioritization questions. Let's say the UAP, or unlicensed assistive uh, personnel, comes and tells you a blood pressure is low or high. You can't take um, what that individual says and act on it because that's not your own assessment data. So remember critically thinking in your NCLEX style questions, you yourself as the RN or LPN need to go and assess that blood pressure yourself. And the best way to do so is taking a manual blood pressure. So I wrote on the board a couple key components to remember. First off, you need your equipment, you have your blood pressure cuff, and you will need a stethoscope that we will use to auscultate the brachial artery is the example I'm going to show you today. And then let's talk about other key things. You always need to identify your client and really you should know the baseline blood pressure of your client. So for instance, I will be working with Ms. Rago. I should have already have looked into Ms. Rago's chart. I should know first off two identifiers, her name and date of birth, because I need that when I obtain my vital signs. Second off, you really need to look for contraindications. There's a lot of reasons that we can't do blood pressures on one extremity or the other. This is now a safety risk for our clients. So please look in their chart beforehand. Look for any conditions that would make blood pressure in that extremity a contraindication, such as dialysis access. If you ever see a bump sticking out of somebody's arm, and when you feel it, you feel like little butterflies underneath of it. I don't know if y'all heard the term, or if you're far enough near program to know with um, our renal dialysis access, we always um, palpate a thrill and hear a brewing. So if you see any bump in the arm or any implant, that's a contraindication. That could be a dialysis access. You cannot use that site. Um, mastectomy clients. Um, individuals who have had breasts removed along with lymph nodes in that area, we cannot touch these clients' extremities. So let's say a client had a left radical mastectomy with lymph node removal. Well, we couldn't touch that extremity because we could hurt their arm. You never want to go into an arm that has an IV or any central line or pick line, any access device on that side, you would want to avoid that extremity because we can always get blood pressure. We can get blood pressure on the opposite arm. We can even get blood pressure in the legs. So there's multiple areas that we can get blood pressures in. And then something else my students ask me a lot, with your CVA clients, your cerebral vascular accident, AKA stroke clients, sometimes they could have an affected side that's very weak or could be contracted or they might not be able to move it. Well, it's not necessarily a contraindication but the blood pressure reading might not be as accurate on that affected side. So you really, if you can, wanna go on the unaffected side for those clients. So those are just some big key things to look for that are contraindications to doing a blood pressure on one side or the other. Other things we need to think about is correct cuff size. If you have a cuff that is too big on a client, you could have an abnormal, abnormal blood pressure reading and it tends to be lower than their normal reading. If you have a cuff that is too small, the reading tends to be higher. So when you look at your blood pressure cuffs lengthwise, when I place this on Ms. Rago's arm, it should cover 80 to 100% completely. And really, we should have about 20% left over of the cuff. Let me clarify that because that didn't make a lot of sense. When we put it on, about 20% of the cuff should be left over. We should have additional room. And you should be able to fit, fit two fingers very comfortably under the cuff as well, okay? Um, so make sure you have the correct cuff size for your client. And let's talk about positioning, client position. If they are sitting in a chair, which Ms. Rego will be, please have their feet straight on the ground. You don't want their feet crossed 
Uh, we want their arm at heart level, okay? And you really wanna make sure you have good access because the um, blood pressure we're going to auscultate, auscultate today will be over the brachial artery. So make sure you have good access to that extremity that you're getting a blood pressure on. And last but not least, we are going to take our blood pressure. So I'm going to verbally walk you through this scenario, things you need to understand, and then I'm gonna bring the client in and demonstrate how to take a blood pressure for you. So the first thing I should have done, again, I should have looked at my chart. I should know my client's name and date of birth. I should have looked for any contraindications to why they couldn't have a blood pressure taking on an extremity. And then I really wanna look, what is their baseline blood pressure? What is their blood pressure currently running? Because when you inflate your cuff, you wanna inflate 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury higher than their baseline. And a key point I always tell my nursing students, if you inflate your cuff and you deflate and you hear a sound instantly, you need to start all over again. Their blood pressure could be so high that we're not getting an accurate reading. So get their baseline, inflate the cuff, about 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury over their baseline, and then you can start deflating your cuff. So let's talk about what um, we want to hear. First off, you need to position the cuff two inches above the artery you're auscultating. So the artery we're gonna auscultate today is our brachial artery, and always palpate the artery first, because on your cuff, it will show you exactly where to position it. We wanna put this arrow two inches above the artery we're auscultating. And today, that we're gonna, again, I'm gonna show you your brachial artery, but we can get blood pressures in the forearm. Let's say there's not a cuff big enough for a client's upper arm. We can put a blood pressure cuff right here, and what would we, we be auscultating? We'd auscultate the radial artery. So just know what artery you're gonna auscultate and place the cuff about two inches above it. And then something else we need to think about, and especially if this is your first time. When we use our stethoscope, the portion of the stethoscope that we are gonna place over the artery is gonna be our diaphragm. That's the bigger part of the stethoscope. And a lot of these stethoscopes twist, and they can turn from the diaphragm to the bell. So please make sure you check your stethoscope beforehand, tap it, make sure you hear that tap, that you are on the correct site. And we're gonna use the bigger portion, which is the di diaphragm. Something else when you place your stethoscope, you never want to put your thumb on top of your stethoscope when you're placing it. You have pulses that you can pick up in your own thumb. So really make sure you use a correct technique and place your fingers and don't put anything on top of the bell while you're auscultating because it could make you hear a sound. That is not, we call them quarter cough sounds. That's not the actual sound you wanna hear. That is telling us the client's blood pressure. And then another key component is with our actual blood pressure cuff. Make sure that I say righty tighty lefty loosey. You want to make sure that initially your little dial is all the way to the right because Righty tighty. So righty tighty to blow up and then lefty loosey to let down so we can start here in our porticoff sounds. And what we are looking for, and this is a big word that takes me a lot of practice to pronounce correctly. This is a spinko mammometer. Thank you, I worked hard on that. So what we're gonna look for when y'all go up and listen for these porticoff sounds. Uh, Miss Ray goes, I've already looked, her baseline blood pressure is 120 over 80. So these are in increments, the big dark lines are in increments of 10. And remember, your blood pressure cuff only has five little tick marks between those big bold lines. So that means it goes up in increments of two. So there is 120. And again, I told you we need to blow up the cuff 30 to 40 millimeters over. So I'm going to blow up 40 millimeters, 40 millimeters of mercury over. So I'm going to go to 160. And then I'm going to slowly start to deflate my cuff. The first clear sound you hear, clear sound, is your systolic blood pressure. And then wherever you hear your last sound is your diastolic blood pressure. And let me just tell you, 
the more you are moving when you're listening to your blood pressure, you're gonna hear abnormal sounds. They're not gonna be those corticoff sounds that are showing us our blood pressure reading. So please keep your stethoscope clear, uh, still. Please make sure you're hearing clear sounds and remember it's a pulse that we're auscultating. So you should hear those clear sounds in a rhythmic method as you're deflating the cuff, okay? And again, the key to blood pressure measurement is practice, practice, practice. Uh, as an instructor, we will have a double stethoscope when we practice with you. But make sure, go home, whoever you can get a blood pressure on, you need to practice and make sure you're hearing that first clear sound for your systolic and the last sound you hear is your diastolic blood pressure, okay? So now I'm going to demonstrate this to you with a client, Miss Rayo. Come on in. Hello. How are you today? Good. Please have a seat for me. Okay. So Miss Rayo, I'm going to check a couple things. Um, I have your chart open and I see that you're not allergic to anything, correct? Correct. Can you please verify your name and date of birth for me? Sure. Um, name is Amrita Rigo mm -hmm. and date of birth is September 15th, 1986. Perfect. We want to check that with our armband. That's correct. And I see you have no previous surgery. There's mm -hmm. no reason that I cannot get a blood pressure on either extremity, correct? Correct. All right. What is your blood pressure typically run? Um, it's usually um, 120 over 80. Wonderful. So I'm just going to do some hand hygiene. Mm -hmm. I would provide privacy. Um, so I'll close the door, pull the curtain. And what I'm going to do, I first am going to palpate your brachial artery. So remember, the brachial artery tends to be in the inner arm, more towards the inner side of the arm. So she has a very, um, well, I can easily palpate her brachial artery. It's actually a plus two rating on the scale of zero to uh, plus four. And we're going to take our blood pressure cup and, excuse me, Ms. Rago, line my equipment together, and we are going to make sure to put that arrow that says artery mark and palpate it one more time if you can't remember where it is, and put it two inches above. And you want to make sure you have a nice, good fit. Do you see how much cuff is left over? It's more than 20%. This is a well-fitting cuff for Ms. Rago. So I'm gonna put my sphingol mammometer where I can visibly see it because this is what I'm going to have to read, okay? And remember, we said righty tighty. So go ahead, screw it all the way to the right and I want you to loosen it just a little bit because if it's too tight, when you try to deflate while you're assessing their blood pressure, it'll deflate too fast. So righty tighty, loosen it just a little bit and we are going to put our stethoscope in. Something else I noticed that nursing students weren't aware of, when you put a stethoscope in, it should be facing towards your nose. If the stethoscope buds are facing back towards your ears, it's actually not going how you want it to go into your ear canal. So make sure your stethoscope faces towards your nose. I'm going to check and I wanna use the diaphragm. It's actually not on the diaphragm. I tap it, I hear it very well. And I like to hold my stethoscope with my left hand and manipulate um, the blood pressure cuff with my right. However you are comfortable with, but that's my preference. And look how I'm holding the stethoscope. We're not putting our thumb, we're holding it to the side. So if you don't mind, we'll put your arm right there and you can just relax it. Mm -hmm. So righty tighty, we're gonna inflate to 160 for Miss Rago and slowly, your blood pressure is actually slightly lower than normal. Your blood pressure right now is running 110 over 72. Is mm -hmm. that okay for you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Wonderful. Well, Ms. Rago, is there anything else I can do for you? No, I think uh, you did great. Thank All you. Right. Yes. Here's your call button. Thank you. I'll make sure anything you need and mm -hmm. please call out immediately. Okay. So okay. once you leave your client, always ensure their safety. They should have a call button in reach. Their bed should be in low position. Always have non-skid footwear on if you were to get them out of bed. Well, this is our steps to assessing a manual blood pressure. I would then go to the chart and document the blood pressure. So I hope this helps. I know manual blood pressures can be extremely nerve wracking, especially when you're first learning it. 
But don't forget, y'all can do it. We are better together as nurses. Take care.